If students had all the money in the world, we wouldn't be watching these types of videos. We would get the MacBook Pro 2020 model and we would get the iPad Pro full on package with the Magic Keyboard and an Apple Pencil. But these devices are not cheap. Thankfully, Apple has some pretty good discounts going on right now for students. You can get a discounted Mac or an iPad for university or college and get AirPods. You can pay extra money to get AirPods Pro, which I definitely recommend you do. I just made a video on AirPods Pro that you can watch right now. MacBook Pro 13 inch base model costs 1569 Canadian dollars. MacBook Air and the iPad Pro 12.9 inch model both cost 1169 Canadian dollars and then you add on the magic keyboard which is 399 and Apple pencil for 169 for the full-on iPad Pro package you're looking at 1737 Canadian dollars I won't be going over all the different things that iPad Pros can do for your college courses, but I'd rather talk about some of the things that you need to consider before making this purchase as opposed to buying a MacBook. I think buying an iPad Pro is legitimately a better option than buying a MacBook if you fit into these four categories. One, if you're a student who loves writing handwritten notes and you've been doing that since high school, this is a no-brainer. You should go ahead with the iPad Pro. Two, if you prioritize portability and you need to carry the device around everywhere, this is also a no-brainer. iPad Pro should be the model that you choose. Three, this is really important. If your school or your university or college put out a statement saying that their assessments, their courses, and their exams are iPad compatible, then I think it makes sense to buy an iPad Pro. And four, if you do not foresee yourself in the next five years to doing any complex work with an iPad Pro that would require a computer instead, I think it makes sense to buy an iPad Pro. And those are things like having to open any complex programs and files that are only desktop compatible, doing any heavy duty creative work like video or photo editing with large files, downloading and managing multiple files, documents, photos, and texts, and organizing them in multiple folders to write thesis papers or work on different projects. If you don't really foresee yourself doing that and caring about all the productivity and efficiency, then there's really no point in buying a MacBook. Speaking of productivity, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. I know a lot of you guys watch guys like Ali Abdal and Anas Ali. They have some great classes out there that I've personally watched and learned a lot from. For example, Ali has a new class on productivity masterclass called Principles and Tools to Boost Your Productivity. He talks about the productivity equation, the myth of I don't have time, the myth of motivation, myth of multitasking, and many more. And if you really want to know how to study for exams, Ali has an evidence-based masterclass that's four hours and 30 minutes long, and he literally talks about all the different study strategies. And Anas also came out with a YouTube masterclass on how to build a meaningful channel. He talks about finding your purpose and your niche, the equipment that he uses, and how to present yourself in front of a camera. This would also be a great class to watch if you're a new YouTuber. So the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get a two month free trial of Skillshare premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Let's go back to the video. I personally know a couple of people in medicine who use iPad Pros as their primary device to get 90 to 100% of the work done without requiring a computer. I've seen it work as a primary device and I have close friends who love their iPad Pros and they swear by them. But I just worry for those students who spend $1,800 Canadian on iPad Pro package and run into that 5 to 15% situations where you do need a laptop and just cannot work with an iPad Pro. What are you going to do then? Do you have a backup computer that you can use or do you you have access to a library where there are access to computers. 
especially during COVID-19 where universities put out different statements on software compatibility, you really need to pay attention to those. If you're running Zoom and if you have different websites open and different programs open to write your exams, you need to make sure that iPad OS is compatible to do that. This is exactly the reason why I hate these tech review videos that recommend iPad Pro package for students. Go ahead, buy an iPad Pro for college and you'll be great. Just because it works for them, the non-students, doesn't mean that it's going to work for you as a student. As a student who's gone through five years of undergrad studying science, arts, and business, and three years of medical school, I can say with conviction that if you're a high-functioning student, over the college years, you will run into more situations than the general population where you will require your device to do some heavy-duty work. So let's talk about some of the inefficiencies I ran into when using an iPad Pro for heavy-duty work. First is file organization system. I'm not saying that iPad Pros have a bad system. You can work completely fine if you're doing some light writing and non-intensive schoolwork. But only when it gets to some heavy duty writing where you have to carefully manage multiple references, files, and documents that this iPad organization system becomes inefficient compared to Mac OS. This is the level of file organization you reach with three years of research. It just takes less time and effort to quickly organize and pull out information with Mac OS compared to iPad OS where a lot of users rely on iCloud or Google Drive. Second, again, with heavy duty writing, which I only think is applicable if you're in higher level courses in university or honors program or doing research, when you need to have a bunch of PDF documents and Word documents open, it is so much easier to navigate that through Mac OS than iPad OS. Having the ability to have windows and documents that you can stack, resize, and copy and paste is way better than iPad OS. You want to remove those inefficiencies because when you're writing your thesis or your research paper, you're already stressed enough. Third, the Microsoft apps like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint are limited in their function compared to Mac OS. You can make an argument that you can use a third-party app that's not Microsoft Word, but the convention is that we use Microsoft apps. A lot of the documents we have to be reformatted once you're using a third-party app, and a lot of documents that you receive from other people are in Microsoft Word. I would say there are enough functions to do light editing, but when you have to work with graphs, tables, different Excel functions, data analysis, formatting papers, I'd use a MacBook Pro any day over iPad Pros. And lastly, working with Final Cut Pro X or Adobe Creative programs with an external monitor, external hard drive, and a power source, you can't really do that with two USB-C ports that comes with iPad Pro and their Magic Keyboard. The lack of desktop makes it difficult to do any proper video editing, hence, despite Apple advertising that you can make videos with iPad Pros very fast, no YouTubers ever make videos using an iPad Pro. Having said that, these disadvantages are all software problems and once Apple upgrades to improve these functions, I personally will be making a change to an iPad Pro. Okay, that's it folks. In my next video, I will talk about my MacBook Pro 2020 13 inch model after 100 days of owning it. And then the video after that, I will give a review of MacBook Air. I hope you guys have a good day and I'll see you guys soon.